Or since we've had Hopkins, gave him a little fiery interview. Yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's fired up. He said that he would ride with you until the very end, and then you work harder than anybody he's ever seen. What's it like to get that kind of backup going in? I mean, that means the world, man. You know, Matt Barkhorst, uh, leader offensive line, center. Uh, and be able to hear that, uh, and that he said that about me, you know, it means a lot. Coming from a senior who's been here since his fifth year, since uh, last hoorah. So be able to hear that from somebody like Matt Bockhorst and see how much work he puts in for himself, you know, it's amazing. You know, I appreciate that, Matt. Appreciate that, Matt. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it's, I mean, yeah, definitely. I think as an offense, we probably do. They're all definitely all frustrated that we know the type of uh, caliber we have as an offense, the type of weapons that we have. Type, I mean, just, the, just to know, like, where we want to be as an offense. Definitely we, we want to be better than we have been. But at the end of the day, I mean, it is what it is. So the only way you can do is the only way you can just go up, just continue to work, continue to get back at it today on Monday, and take it day by day, and just focus each and every day. Learn from what, uh, learn from our past, and just just look to the future. You need to say that one more time. My fault. Yeah, I think the main thing we were talking about is you just can't press. I mean. The outcome uh, we see in practice, it didn't show up. But we know how much of an offense we are, how better we are. And it's just, you just can't press, you know. When things aren't going right where you feel like they should be and the expectations that we have for ourselves aren't going as well as planned, you just can't press. At the end of the day, it's going to eventually come. You just got to keep working and you just got to keep following. You just got to keep following the plan, trusting the process. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. T it, took, it, took, it took a long time to build Rome. So, you know, you just got to continue to keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we just got to, where we have it, where the stuff we're doing at practice, we just got to be able to translate to the game. You know, it goes as well as me and everybody. But for the most part, like our practice has been solid. We've had great practices, and we just have to translate to the game. So we're looking, look, definitely look forward to this week, be able to translate the great work of practice this week, great work of preparation, and just take it to the game against NC State. Expect to see a little two cloud coverage Saturday. Uh, I mean, that's what we've seen on film. Uh, a lot of uh, 38 double cloud, run a lot of uh, what our defense would call a lot of cyclone with the three high safety look. Uh, they do a lot of stuff on NC State. They have some really good athletes, and uh, definitely going to be a great challenge for us, but we're ready to go. Uh, definitely, I know. Footwork-wise, definitely just just staying in the pocket, just being more comfortable. Sometimes I get a little bit antsy, and my feet start going erratic, and it kind of don't translate the feet over. Or maybe go from one read to the other. Just move my eyes instead of moving my feet as well to get my feet over. With. But that's definitely definitely one thing. Just make sure my footwork, uh, all my footwork, right every single play. Just being locked in with that. Do you feel like that's been the biggest issue in terms of the deeper throws that you've made at the college this season? Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think some of them just missed. I don't know if it's just technique. I just just missed some of them. Some of them has just been I just flat out missed it. And some of it can be technique a little bit, but I think sometimes it's just I just missed the throw. Would you like to have more deep throw opportunities? I mean, during warmups, mm -hmm. these beautiful <laughs> deep balls to the end zone. And mm -hmm. Seems to be uh, haven't been as many during the game. Is, is that maybe is that something that you could see him do better with? And, uh, I think for me is just whatever Coach Elliott calls and for what the defense has been playing against, especially last game, and they were taking away all the deep passes, uh, the different coverages they were running, they were taking away the big shots, and they wanted this, trying to keep everything in front of us. So uh, whatever Coach Elliott wants to call, man, I'm, I'm ready to do whatever, if that's whatever it is. You got a little, little fired up on your runs. Yes, sir. And you told me after the game, you like it in the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know. I think some, sometimes just running the ball kind of gets me fired up, kind of gets me going, uh, kind of gets me into the game, maybe settles me down a little bit, uh, but it kind of just gets gets me going, you know, feeling contact, like feeling contact, like getting hit, 
Yeah, I don't know. I just run, running ball. Uh, this is something different. I don't know. It just it gets me a different type of mood. In the run game, do you feel like maybe there's some times you, you could have pulled it? Uh, instead, especially there in the first half. I think sometimes, yeah. I'll go back and watch the film. There's definitely some parts like maybe I could have pulled it here on the zone read. Maybe I couldn't. But for the most part, I thought I did a pretty good job with the zone read. Uh, and then I, I, that's what I thought. I thought I did a pretty good job. CJ, you must have some of the frustration and things not going how you wanted to offensively and not mm-hmm. pressing. Have you have you had to fight that with yourself? Have you felt yourself pressing at all in these first three games? Uh, uh, not really, not for the most part. I mean, it's definitely frustrating. You know, as offense, you want to be able to score points, and to what the standard we've held at Clemson with our Clemson offense has been we put up massive amounts of yards, massive amount of points, and it, yeah, definitely is frustrating to not see that. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, you can't do nothing about it. You can't dwell on the past. You just got to continue to move forward. You just got to take every day and just prepare. Uh, prepare for NC State, take it day by day, and just have a great week of preparation, and just we'll just take it out to the field. There were a couple times Saturday where you guys came over and sat down, mm-hmm. and Coach Lee came out the end of the huddle. Mm-hmm. It's unusual. What, what did he say? What was his message to you guys? Like on the sidelines, or yeah. like oh, on the sidelines? He was just talking to us, you know. He was just talking to us about the game, like what we did, in that, what he seen in that drive, talking about we got finished, we got put up points. I know one of them, we got to finish the drive. That was the main thing. We got to finish the drives, you know. We got to come out with points. We got to come out with a touchdown. We get to the red zone. Uh, we just got. We just got to come out with points. What he was basically saying. Miscommunications on maybe some of the routes, but I know the one that got his feet. You know, that one was just a bad throw. I just missed that one. Got to put it in a better ball where he can make a play for it. Uh, and then the first one, you said I don't really remember that play. Don't really recall that play. But for the most part, I just got to continue to get my footwork right. Continue to make the throws and just make every throw. Just make it easy on the receivers and make them give them a catchable ball. Um, I mean, that's what they want you to do. That's what they, uh, I mean, when you have a 3-2 box like that, but you have two overhangs that are hanging right there outside of the tackle, probably splitting the number two receivers, splitting the tackle, where their first thing is a run fit. So technically, it's a 3-2 box, but with those guys standing right there, it's going to be a seven-man box, and then you also have low safety. So it could be a seven, eight-man box, or it can look like it can look like it's a five-man box with a lot of people in coverage, but you have these two guys are reading run first, so they're, they're flying down. So it's gonna be. It can be a heavy box of some sort. So it's 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 a it's a it's a uh, it's a good defense for run and pass. And it, uh, hats off to Georgia Tech. They did a great job for the defensive scheme. And you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we still got a W. So what are the plays that you were playing? I guess looking back, mm-hmm. now that y'all have some hindsight, mm-hmm. um, where are the areas you think were most advantageous to your attack in that type of? Oh yeah, definitely run the ball, like you said. I mean. And that, with that type of defense, you got to pound it. You know, you got to be able to run the ball at will, and you got to get them out of that form, out of that defense. You just continue to pound it. So that was the main thing when Coach Sweeney was talking about Coach Elliott. We just got to be able to run the ball. That if they're not going to get out of this defense, we just got to run them out of it. Any questions on Zoom for DJ? Hey, DJ, it's Trevor Rosen from NewsTigers.com. Uh, we had the, the drop snap against Georgia, and then another one on Saturday. Um, was this something that distracted? I just kind of took my eyes off it for a split second. Uh, just didn't catch the snap all the way. Kind of was looking somewhere else, and then just didn't fully catch the ball. And you had your best game at, at Notre Dame last season in South Bend. Uh, they didn't have as many fans, of course, as NC State will this week. But uh, do you enjoy going into that type of environment where everybody's against you? Uh, definitely. You know, I like playing away games. I like playing home games as well, but I like playing away games. I think some. Something about playing away games and going to another fan's uh, fan base and just playing in another stadium. I think it's just a cool environment. You know, you get there's only once in once in once in a couple times you get to go to a home get to go to a away game. They play against a big crowd, a loud crowd, and uh, it's it's a cool it's a cool experience. So really excited about it. It's my first time in Raleigh, uh, NC State, and it's gonna be exciting. Anything else for DJ? All right, thank you. Thank you. DJ. Thank you. Huh?
to say myself, but there's, there's a couple people up there that are contenders. Yeah. Yeah.